And we are live. And it recorded some stuff that I don't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. We're good. It might be talking about Ikea on the front end. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we are live and we're going to wait a few minutes till see if anybody joins and then we'll get started. It is 8.59 or something. Hard for me to see sometimes from a distance with these beautiful bifocals and see what these times are on my computer. So we're going to wait a few minutes and see what happens and, and give folks a chance to join up. Uh, see, somebody's already saying morning, Mayor. Well, morning. Uh, who is that? Oh, Miss Ramsey. Good morning, Miss Ramsey. How are you? Oh, it's a great day to be a Brian Hornet. That's all I'm saying. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a little bit. So. Chief Menden's just jumped on, on on the chat line, so that's good. At least at least we got a couple people watching today, and that's okay. I may be a little bit hoarse today. Uh, there was a football game last night, I'm just saying. We'll talk about that in a minute. So It is coffee with the mayor. I have my coffee. Uh, shout out to Aurora. Uh, as it says, save eight, donate. Talking about organ donations. Uh, I did a live stream with them earlier this month. Uh, about organ donations and the fact that we still need to do that even in this this time. So if at all possible, be sure to register to be an organ donor. Uh, you can do that at Bishop Center. We have a kiosk there where you can you know swipe your ID or your driver's license and register if you're not registered. So go ahead and do that. Looks like Mr. Ramsey's here as well and Sue Smith is watching as well. Looks like we got a few people today, so that's good. Well, it is nine o'clock according to my computer, so we will get started and uh, have some good times. Uh, I will say welcome to everybody out there to uh, November's Coffee with the Mayor. As we, I will say last weekend was a busy weekend. We had Halloween and stuff like that, and that beautiful time change that I absolutely hate, because it means when I get home from the office, it's usually dark. and. I can't do much outside because of that, but that's okay. Uh, we survived. I've survived this week. I actually got to sleep in till about 6.15 this morning, first time since the time change. Uh, all this week, I've been not able to sleep past about 4 or 4.30 in the morning because of this time change. So I guess my tired caught up to me and I made up for it last night. So anyway, welcome everybody. Jump, jump on in. Uh, uh, See so more people joining up, which is really always good. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them about and put them in the chat line and we will work through those as we go. Uh, we do have a special guest coming up in a little bit. That'll be Trish Power, uh, hopefully. Uh, she may have to try to rejoin. I don't know because I lost her on this little screen where it says admit her. So uh, I might send her a little quick invite again just to make sure as I'm talking because uh, maybe I'm down I don't know um, so as I'm doing this you understand it sometimes it's hard for me to do technology and talk at the same time so forgive me uh, so there we are we're good there uh, there we go we got her I'm going to go ahead and admit Trish uh, and we will get started uh, we'll, we'll let her talk about what she's going to do what she's doing today because animal control is doing some really cool things today. I'm just saying, hello, Trish, how are you? Hi. I'm Adjust good. my volume so I can actually hear you. <laughs> there. there we go. So how are things in the world of animal control? Busy. <laughs> we oh, are so they are. Busy. Yeah, I'm trying to get my, my, my own volume adjusted. <laughs> oh, you sound good to me. All right. So. So um, we're having an event today um, for the first time since um, COVID started, we're actually going to uh, let people come in to the, the kennel area today. We do ask that everybody, you know, when they come in that they wear a mask and that they, you know, keep in mind social distancing if there's any other people in the shelter while you're here. We're gonna be open from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. So if you wanted to come in and just see the dogs or if uh, you wanted to do some shopping because we have lots of dog clothing still available and we have rock bottom prices today. Um, all of our clothing is going to be available for only a dollar each. 
So Mm -hmm. if you want a vest for your dog or a coat to get them through the winter, um, especially those breeds that maybe get their hair cut or, you know, have that really, really um, lightweight coat, it'd be perfect. Great way to get them what they need. How many dogs do you have in the kennel right now that are able to be adopted? Um, We have, uh, let me take a look here real quick. Let's look. And no, I don't know. So I have, I have four dogs that are available. They still need to get some um, vetting done before they could actually go home, but people could meet them and then um, we could put them on the animals waiting list and then let them know when they're ready. That's right. And if you're first on the waiting list, that means you could get that dog when that dog's ready. I'm just saying. (laughs) Uh, I know I was over there. I think it was, I can't remember if it was earlier this past, this week or last, I think it was last week when we stopped by there and uh, there were some really cute dogs there. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know if they're the same ones are there or they're available because the ones I saw that were really cute weren't available at that time. However, they were real cute. Yeah, um, we have to hold animals for the stray holding period. If they come in as a stray, which is a week, we have to give the owner a chance to claim them. Um, However, sometimes the owners choose not to claim them and uh, they may release them early from that date. If they come in and sign a release form, um, then we can go ahead and adopt them out right away as soon as all their vetting's done. Because by state law, of course, they have to have, you know, they have to be spayed or neutered. And if they're four months of age or older, they have to have a rabies vaccine before they can go. Do you have any cats available right now? I know. Ew, some yes. Like cats. Yeah. In fact, we have one named Elvira, and she is um, 19 pounds. <laughs> she's on a diet, <laughs> so she needs to lose a little bit of weight. Um, but she is beautiful, and we're actually um, hosting a little contest to see who could guess um, how much weight she would lose before she gets adopted because she's actually on an exercise regimen. <laughs> so. Her. Well, we so, all uh, that some days. Yeah, but we're hoping that she'll um, that she'll drop a little bit of weight to get down to a more healthier size. You know, because even just a couple of pounds overweight for a cat, you know, is just a lot of of weight. It's bad on their joints, and and it's not good. You know, they could develop diabetes or heart disease. So That's it's important right. that they lose that weight and get down to a, a healthier size. Yeah, and of course, honestly, that for people like me as well. Uh, That's why I exercise or try to exercise on a pretty regular basis. Some days I'm successful, some days I'm not, and that's okay. (laughs) Uh, So is there anything else you want to talk about with relation to animal control or, or anything else like that before we, you know, move on to whatever we do? Well, I did want to mention that um, I don't know if if, every, if everyone's uh, noticed at the dog park, they have the lights installed now. And oh. so the lights are on um, every evening until 8 p.m. That's when they shut off automatically. So that way, you know, now that it's dark, when a lot of people are getting home from work in the evenings, um, you can still go out and enjoy the dog park um, for a few hours after after 5 p.m. So, so that's nice. Um, and it does uh, light up the large dog area pretty well. So so it's uh, it's really nice to to have that, especially since we still have such mild weather. Um, so get out and enjoy that. And then um, Animal Control also just installed a bunch of brand new kennels. So our our kennel area where the dogs are looks so much nicer than it did. Yeah. Um, we've got all brand new kennels, and we're we're filling up <laughs> pretty quickly. So we're getting lots of use out of them. And that's good, though. Yeah, yeah. we also installed uh, four additional kennels, so now we have a little bit more space. And we also installed some um, pass-through doors in some of the existing kennels, which for a safety um, aspect for our staff and our officers allows us to move a dog from one kennel to the next without actually having to handle them. So if we have a very frightened dog or one that's maybe a little aggressive, um, we don't actually have to put our hands on that animal, which actually makes it just so much better for them. It's a lot safer for the animal control officers, but it's also much better for the dog because then we don't have to force them to be handled if they don't want to be. Which is which is safe for the dogs and the, the people right. that have to take care of exactly. the dog. Exactly. I mean, that, exactly. That's all the way around. Yeah. Of course, yeah. If, if, we they are, feral, if we get yeah. a feral dog in, you know, they really do not want to be touched. So oh. we, we continue to work with them and try to get them where they're socialized but this provides them with an option to, to make their stay a little more comfortable. That's right. And before you, before you release an animal, if I remember right, because, you know, I have a dog from animal that I got from animal control a few years ago, 
you, you go, you take them through a series of processes and steps to make sure that they're compatible and what they are compatible with. So if they're not happy with having cats around, you know that before you get that animal generally, right? Right. We try to, so what we do is we do an adoption assessment, which has a lot of different steps to it. The, um, the first step is just making sure that we feel comfortable handling them um, and identify any potential triggers for any type of aggression or fear-based aggression. So we, um, we uh, will give them a treat and it sounds mean, but then we'll take it away. <laughs> and we're trying to see what they'll do, how they'll react, if they'll just let us take it or if they'll growl or try to bite. Um, we also will introduce them to cats. If we have any cats at the shelter, um, we're currently actively seeking a dog friendly cat to have in the shelter full time. So that way we always have a cat available to do cat dog introductions with. Uh, we just haven't found the right one yet. Um, but we, we do a lot of different things. We hug the dogs, we lean over the dogs. We do a lot of things that would typically um, elicit some type of either fear or defensive response. And that's just to see how they react. Um, and we have to do the same thing when we do our out-of-state transports. When, right. we, when we do those transports, um, the dogs have to go through a series of tests to make sure that they are truly adoptable once they get to their shelter on the other end. So it's very similar to, to that test that we do here uh, before they're available for adoption. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people probably don't realize that that Bryant Animal Control does out of state transports where we transport some of the animals that we have here to different shelters around the U.S. so yes. they can be better adopted. So Right. Right. Um, it's it's one of those things that we we do and we really appreciate your support in that mayor. Um, we traveled this year almost 5000 miles total dropping off um, dogs at partner shelters. Um, we have partners in Texas and um, Nebraska and Wisconsin, and um, and one that we're um, we're partnered with, but we haven't yet done a transport to in Illinois. So um, we've got a lot of options available for our dogs if they don't get adopted here at the shelter. Or, for example, we did a last minute emergency transport because we had a lot of animals that came in all at once. And suddenly we went from being almost empty to being overcrowded. So I contacted a couple of our partners and they were like, absolutely send us a list of who you want to transfer. And we, we moved about, I think it was 14, 14 dogs in that transport. Yeah. And if you've seen our kennels, we only have 24 kennels. (laughs) So if we've got 14 dogs, we're pretty full. Um, And uh, so we, we did that and we were so grateful for those partnerships. And, and again, we're grateful for the people who donated to help make those transports possible. And w- one last thing, some people might not realize this, but because we always talk about dogs and cats, but sometimes you wind up having to take in other animals as well. Tell us about a few of those animals you've had to take in over the last few years. So yes, um, we uh, just adopted out two potbelly piglets. Um, they were about three and a half months old, a male and a female. And uh, they went to a wonderful home to a family that's adopted uh, both, uh, I think, two dogs and a cat from us before. Uh, so, um, so we call those our adoption alumni. <laughs> and so, uh, so now they have two pigs from us as well. Also have two ducks that um, came in over the last few weeks that are going to be available for adoption. And we already have an adopter set up for them, um, who it's also another adoption alumni who has adopted uh, several farm animals from us. Cool. But yes, we get sheep and goats and we've even impounded a horse. Um, so uh, it's, you just never know. If you yeah. can own it as a pet, we can get it in at the shelter. <laughs> well, there you go. So, so just so you know that people out there animal control of stuff and they always stay busy busy uh, they're, they're actually <laughs> sure. they're they're technically ha- have to even at, in the nighttime y'all come out sometimes and have to respond to issues and stuff relating to animals so so right. it, it's often a thankless job but i want to reach out and say thank you to what you for you what you do and your staff and uh i want to tell everybody that's out here listening and that may follow along and listen later that 
go out and visit animal control, adopt an animal, or if you can't, maybe give a donation to animal control because that helps with a variety of different things as well, including those transports. Right, right. Yes, we use those donations for a variety of things, whether it be items that the animals need just to make their stay more comfortable that maybe aren't included in our budget um, to help with the out-of-state transports. Um, we also use that to help with major medical needs. Um, if an animal needs to have some type of surgery that can't be covered by our normal budget, we use that donated funds. So it's used for a variety of different things. And we're so thankful that we have those folks that give us donations. Otherwise we couldn't do nearly as much good in the community as we do. Yeah, one of the things that I've, what I was about, to, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, one of the things donations helped with was the animal park or the, the Bart Park, you know. Dog. Right, right, yes. Yes, we um, got in quite a few donations for that over the years. And, and yes, the all of the benches that are in there were all purchased um, with donated funds. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think next year, we're probably going to uh, have enough money to purchase a couple of more benches. So yeah. I'm hoping that we can we can do that um, after the first of the year. Yeah. So we just got to keep an eye on that, on that money, make sure that we have enough. But, uh, but yeah, it's like, we just want to, um, to do as much good as we possibly can. And, oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention too, is, you know, sometimes we get more things donated to us than we can possibly use um, in the terms of like dog, dog and cat food. So we have been giving away surplus food that's about to expire to the public. So if you are, you know, in a situation where maybe your hours have been cut or you've lost your job and you just need a little extra help to get over the hump until you can get back on your feet, we often have food available for free. So today I'll have the food set out between 10 and two um, or until it's gone. Um, and anyone can just come by and pick up a bag of food. You don't have to talk to anybody. It's no contact pickup. We've even got a couple of bags of treats out there. That's awesome. Thank, and and I, I'm sure the people appreciate that, the, the ones that need it. So that's good. Yeah. We always have to look out for our animals and our, our neighbors as well. You know, that's Absolutely. part of being Americans as far yeah. as I'm concerned. I always say if people think animal control is an animal centric job and in the large part it is, but it's really about the people too. We right. help not only the pets, but the pet owners as well. So right. we're, we're happy to do it. Well, I appreciate all you do and thank you for coming on. I, Thanks. I know it might have been a little short notice because I kind of forgot to send you the, the invite. No earlier in the week and, uh, you know, but I'm glad you were there and y'all are doing this today. And, and I'm glad people are able to come in and start that process again. Yeah. As long as they're masked up and do what they need to do. Right. You know, Absolutely. Business. So just be safe out there, folks. Well, thank you, Mayor. We really appreciate you having us today. And we'll see everybody later. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. All right, I did see a comment on here, and uh, it was uh, Dana formulated a response for him because I was thinking about a way to response, and it might not have been quite appropriate for me to respond. Uh, there was a question said, herd animal control puts down panthers from that town just to the west. Well, actually, uh, and that would be James Walden that said that. Actually, uh, any panther issues from the town to the west, we just let the school district take care of that, you know, and they usually do a pretty good job. Uh, which brings me to talk about last night. I, you know, as you, you may or may not can tell, I, sometimes I'm a little bit hoarse this morning. Sometimes I'm not. Last night was a home football game and Bryant did win again with their 26th straight win with the 70 to 33 win over the Conway Wampus Cats. As I joked on Facebook, it's an imaginary creature, but I was corrected to say it was a mythic creature, uh, a six legged cat, but regardless, we whipped them. I'm just I saying. Think that's where James Walden. Yeah, and I do believe that might be where James Walden resides. Uh, but he is a friend of, of Bryant's, <laughs> and uh, we like to have fun with him, so it's all good. Uh, so, with regard to football playoff start next week, uh, Bryant does have home field advantage. Uh, I think next week they play uh, Harbor. I think that's who it is, or no, Rogers Heritage, one of those two. But anyway, it's a team that honestly, they're winning. I think they've won one game this year. So, but we still need to support the Hornets uh, as they march on through the rest of the just through the playoffs and win hopefully their third straight state championship. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I will say, if you sat near me at the game last night, I will send out a little apology. I did have to. Uh, <laughs> 
addressed the refs a couple of times and with the fact that I think some of their calls were a little uh, and that's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> But it was all right, you know. We survived, and you know, we we won seventy to thirty three. Another mercy rule. Um, I want to shout out to Chief Menden. He said the PD is also an adoption alumni. They adopted a cat, a, a kitten. I guess it was last year they adopted the kitten, and the kitten's getting pretty big now. It's a real fluffy, fuzzy little creature, and they call it CAD. C A D. It stands for part of some dispatch and from stuff that they do because dispatch is actually the owners of that cat so that's a good thing uh one thing that i want to talk about for a minute is this little thing right here if you can read it it says one paper five kids this is a little news newspaper that these group of kids over in the Kerrywood area uh they they they're in virtual school they're doing virtual school this year because of covid these, these five kids are and they're different age groups and what they have done is in the afternoons on certain days, they get together and do a variety of other things besides just sit at their computers and work on their schoolwork, but they have some extra projects that they do. And one of them that they started this year is this newsletter, One Pay for Five Kids. And they were kind enough to ask me to come out for an interview. So I went out there and spent them sitting in the driveway you know socially distanced in the driveway and we chatted and they asked me questions and I answered them and they uh they did a little story on it and it was a great little thing and we, we had a good time uh one of the things I did learn about a couple of these young men and there's a couple of men, young men and, and young women as well but a couple of them like to go herping and if you don't know what that is that they like to go out looking for lizards and snakes and things like that, which is you know kind of cool for me because I like lizards and snakes too. So we had had a lot of fun to talk about that, and, and I learned a lot about them, and they learned some about city government, which is always good for us to do. Uh, and that kind of brings me to my next topic, which oh, Chief Menden threw out that CAD stands for Computer Aided Dispatch. So there you go. So. <clears throat> I guess the cat helps with the dispatch. Yeah. So if, if you happen to listen on police scanners or something, you hear a cat meow, you know what's happening. Uh, with regard to election, yeah, as you know, this past week has been the election. Uh, and I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about our local election. Uh, there were a couple of council members that chose not to run again and ran in their place. So we have two brand new council members that will be coming on January 1st is when they'll be sworn in. Uh, we're still working out the details of that with Judge Cassidy and, and, and a variety of other things because, you know, COVID rules, we have to be careful how we do it. And we want to respect the wishes of the candidates because they want to be able to do certain things certain ways too. Uh, one of the people is Rhonda Sanders. She's going to be one of our council members for Ward 4 now. And she will be there with the existing Brenda Miller, who's already who's been on council for a number of years. So, so that's going to be a good group, uh, and it's going to be fun to have. We also in Ward One uh, replacing Lauren Gladden is Lisa Meyer, and we look forward to having Lisa on as well. Uh, I think she'll provide some different insight that we've had than we've had lately, and I look forward to working with her and Rhonda as well. Uh, and then we have Star Henson. She ran against Denisha Ramsey, and uh, Star happened to win that election. It was it was a great election. It was a great campaign on both of them. Both of them did an outstanding job. Uh, it was a very nice election, if if there's such a thing, you know. It was very civil and cordial, and and I appreciated that. This world, we need that. Uh, but Star wound up being reelected to that, and I uh, look forward to continuing working with Star. Uh, if you, as you remember, uh, I had Denisha on, I guess it was October's coffee with the mayor, and I'd asked Star as well, but she was not able to attend, but, you know, that was okay. And people have lives as well. Not everybody can visit with the mayor for coffee once a week, once a month, and, and believe me, I understand, some of y'all probably just assume not hearing me talk, I'm guessing. Uh, 
So I got the newsletter. I got that. I'm working through my list. I want to give a little news. It was out on Facebook a couple of days ago, and I was actually saving this news for council. But since uh, the organization that gave us this award put it out on Facebook and tagged the city on it and the mayor, we decided to go ahead and put it out there. So Metroplan, which is a regional organization that, that covers like I think Faulkner, Celine, Pulaski, Lone Oak, uh, and maybe Grant County. I can't remember for sure. But it's like five or six counties that Metro Plan covers. It is a it is a planning group, is basically what they do. They assist with planning for infrastructure roads in particular. So they kind of work as a liaison between the federal government and local governments, which is a great thing but they also offer grants and, and we put in for, we've put in for two or three grants with them. Uh, and over the past year or so, we've actually won a couple of grants, but this past week we've won the greatest, the biggest one we've gotten in a long, long time. And we were awarded two and a half millions towards the construction of the Bryant Parkway. So prior to that, we were awarded one and a half million dollars for the Bryant Parkway and $195,000 for the construction of trails, of some of the trails associated with the parkway. So I'm grateful to Metro Plan for having the foresight to see the need for that road and the fact that it'll uh, you know, help with congestion on Reynolds Road and stuff like that. It'll also make the airport more accessible from the interstate, which will help grow the airport as well, which is always a good thing. So uh, moving on to other stuff, uh, November, we are in November. We're actually, it's November 7th, or so we're a week into it basically. And I wanna, I did a proclamation at the last council meeting and the fact that this is small, we named this small business month. And of course the Thanksgiving is small business Saturday. Uh, and what, basically what that means is we would love for you to be able to shop local shop the small businesses, make sure that they are doing okay with that because the money you give that pay them actually stays in our community. So if you go to play, you know, Walmart, which everybody shops there and I understand I do as well and different places like that, most of that money except for salaries does not really stay in Bryant. It goes off to a corporate headquarters and they distribute it out however they want to for their profits and stuff, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Local businesses do the same thing, but their profit stays in town basically because they're here. And there's been some economic studies where when you spend a dollar locally like that, that dollar is recycled through the economy three or four times before it actually leaves the city again. So that's always good. So any every dollar you spend local is actually you know added to what and helps the city basically is what it does. Helps the city and it helps the residents because those small businesses they do have payrolls that they have to meet. And this year has been an exceptionally hard time period for them with COVID and the shutdowns that have occurred. So if you can shop support your local people, especially this month and Saturday. Uh, I know they will appreciate it, and and, uh, and I will too, and the chamber will too. So uh, the chamber usually pushes this out pretty strongly. Uh, I will. I want to talk about some projects that we've been doing. Uh, we're continually working on infrastructure in this city. Uh, we're continuing the studies that we've been doing for stormwater, and some of those projects have kicked off, and have been in process, and some are about to to kick off. Uh, one of the neatest things that we did recently was get some new equipment in public works and it's called pipe bursting equipment. And what this equipment does is basically they, you can dig a hole in the ground and you set this equipment down it and you run drill stem basically through the pipe that's existing uh, to a certain distance, you know, two, 300 feet down the road, wherever it's at. And then you, you know, of course, you have a hole there. And so you have access and then you connect the pipe that you're going to put in the ground to that. And then you pull that 
back through the ground. And as it pulls through, there's a device on the front of it called a head. And it it's bigger than the pipe that is going through. So it takes that pipe and it breaks it and pushes it out into the earth. The, the new pipe to be pulled in. And so what that does is it prevents you from having to spend a lot of time and labor and expense on digging an open trench. And you can just pull this through there. And the neat thing about it is the only places they have to dig a hole in is where they have a service connection to that. So I, I actually over in Henson, on Henson Place, they were doing this the other day and I went out and looked and they, you know, in front of each house, they had a small hole and then they had a little bigger hole where they started, <clears throat> started this thread and a hole where they did. And I watched them as they pulled that pipe through. And then once they get the new pipe in place, they go in these smaller holes, reconnect your service, fill it in, and it's all good. It's a lot less intrusive and it's a lot faster, more efficient, and it's a great cost savings. Uh, there's a savings probably of 30, 40, 50% on the cost of a job. On the section that they were doing over at Henson Place, it probably saved $50,000 on, on expense for that job. And what that allows us to do is to take that savings and use that on other projects for public works and things like that for other water projects, stormwater projects, sewer projects, and things like that. So it's always important to save money on projects like this so we can use that money on other projects and continue with these improvements to infrastructure that we've been mandated to do by the state. So that's pretty good. Uh, I don't have much else going on. A couple of announcements for some workshops and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess the uh, football is catching up to me again. Uh, I will say this on Monday there, we have a workshop with council to discuss a &P, some requests for some leftover a and money we have. Well, that's at six o'clock. Uh, you can watch it live streamed. Uh, we're going to have to have it in a smaller area. We're not going to have it in the courtroom this, this time because there's a meeting there already. We're going to be over at the fire department and it's a smaller space. So unfortunately space will be limited there, but you can watch the stream on this. Now with a workshop, remember decisions aren't made, votes aren't taken during a workshop. It's just a discussion of the projects to, to, so council can get a better feel for what they are and, and the needs of that project. And then they can decide how they want to fund that or if they want to fund that. And that, that decision is ultimately the council's decision. Uh, and they will make a decision on those projects a week on Tuesday the 17th, which is when our council meeting is this month. Uh, we moved it up a little bit. And of course, it's been on the calendar as the 17th since the first of the year. But we have it there because of the following week is Thanksgiving and you know, a lot of people like to travel out of out of town or whatnot, uh, go see grandma and stuff on Thanksgiving. So we want to give people that opportunity and not have not be forced to come to council for something. Uh, the council meeting on the 17th starts at 630 and at 530 before that we have a budget workshop, which is where we we, we as the city administration presents the balanced budget for 2021 to city council. And that's, you know, and we'll present it to them if they have any questions, we work through the questions and talk about things like that. And then we're going to, then that will go, uh, ultimately in December, that will go to council for vote for passage because state law says that cities in Arkansas have to have a balanced budget by January 1st. If they don't have a balanced budget by January 1st, they have another month to do it, but they have to pass a balanced budget for January itself then. So it makes more sense to get it all done ahead of time. And it's a good thing to have. It's always good to have a balanced budget. Uh, it looks like somebody with passing of issue one of Bryant be getting additional funds for road repair and improvement. Well, we won't necessarily be getting additional funds. I don't know. It partly depends on, on the revenues that this, they collect with that issue. Uh, but it will mean we should not be losing funds and revenues from the state. Uh, if that pa had not passed, we would have been losing about $380,000, a little over $380,000 a year that we use for street funds. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily mean we'll get more, but it 
means we won't get less, which is always good. And that distribution is also based on population and hopefully the census numbers will be good and, and we'll have an increased number of population in Bryant over the last census and we should get more money as a result of that as well. So, so remember, it's all tied together. So that's a good question, Mr. Thompson. I appreciate that. Uh, any update on Boone Road improvements? Any update on Boone Road improvements? We're still looking at that. Uh, there is some discussion of doing some overlay on parts of Boone Road right now. It's always continually being discussed on, on ways to make Boone Road better. Uh, in other words, widen it a little bit. I was talking to uh, Public Works the other day. And uh, I don't know if you all remember a number of years ago, if you were in this area, uh, was a little bit narrow in spots too and they didn't really have any shoulders so they went through and actually added a little bit to make a, a shoulder on that so it was a little safer to drive on uh, we're kind of looking to do that right now for parts of boone road some of boone road we're actually looking at especially right around bishop center where it habitually floods of raise uh, working to raise that road up in that area and build it up to where it doesn't flood just about every time we have a good hard rain uh, so we're looking at that and, and we're always looking for other improvements. Uh, it's right. always difficult when you widen a road in areas like that because you wind up having to get more right of way from people that live there. And sometimes people aren't happy with that. So we always have to balance everything out with things like that. Um, Mark, we're going to get that update here. Accounts are making it always go back and refer. On oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And Dana pointed out that Mark Grimmett gave that update on council and you can always go back to YouTube and look at some of the council meetings. I think it was the last one, the last one that the, where he gave that update and you can, you can listen in on that if you need to. So and get more details on it. So, uh, can't see anything else on that, uh, so far. Uh, so let me, that brings me to COVID, which as you've been hearing in the news, the numbers are increasing of days, Arkansas has had record numbers of cases. Again, seems like the longer it goes, the higher the numbers get, which, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, it is expected. I would ask that you do be careful out there. Uh, some people get very sick from this. Um, I did catch, have COVID as you may or may not remember. Uh, luckily myself and my family, we are, uh, symptoms were very, very mild. So we were blessed in that regard. But some people, their symptoms, they wind up going in the hospital in intensive care. And the studies indicate if you wind up in intensive care on a ventilator, you have much, much greater chance of passing. So uh, be careful, be mindful of others, uh, wear your masks out in public, uh, maintain your social distance where you can. Uh, if, if everybody does that, it won't stop the spread, but it helps slow it down and it makes it a little more manageable for people. Uh, it, there's maybe some indications that wearing a mask and you get exposed, you might not get that load of that initial viral load so your body can fight it a little better so you don't have as bad as symptoms. I personally think that may be what happened to me, you know, so, but, you know, I don't know. So anyway, stay, stay safe, stay vigilant, because uh, holidays are coming up. We're gonna be visiting families an extended family so be aware of that be and uh, be aware that you know our elderly population are at higher risk and if you have secondary issues uh that can put you at higher risk as well so please be careful out there that's all i ask uh and uh that's really all i have today uh I don't see any other questions coming up. I will give it a second or two and, and I'll ask Dana if she can think of anything that I've missed or haven't mentioned. Uh, we didn't mention Bryant 101. Oh, well, that's right. We didn't mention Bryant 101. The last class finished up this past month and I will say it was a great group of people just like the first one. Uh, we will be doing that in the future as well. Uh, we're gonna do one class, I think a year after this because these things take about eight weeks of time for us. <clears throat> and with preparation from department heads and all that, and that was 16 evenings uh, of this year that were kind of busy for a lot of us. And uh, I appreciate everybody that helped with that, especially Dana, because honestly, 
she is the spearhead of that of, of that she does such a great job of it so i appreciate that but you know 16 weeks is a long a long time to to run these things so we're going to do once a week and what's nice about bryant 101 is and it's a phenomenal little thing i think is it allows people to get a better understanding of how city government interacts with the residents of Bryant. And that's very important to know. It also allows these people to understand, oh, if I have a problem or if I know somebody has a problem, I can tell them to contact this particular person, which is always nice, or I can, I can guide them on how to do it. So basically it helps us as a city get information out. Uh, what's nice about it is a lot of the people that have been going through Bryant 101 want to be more involved and they are becoming more involved. Uh, it is a good place for me as a mayor to look at, at people and say, oh, you know, I'm needing somebody to fill this vacancy on a committee. And uh, I think this person would be a good fit and I've already met them and I know them. So it, it helps with that. It's not the only way to get on a committee or anything like that. So don't get me wrong with that, but it's a good way to get involved. And uh, if we need volunteers for different functions, sometimes we can reach out to those people as well. So it is a great thing to do. Uh, feel free when we open it back up. We're looking at the time right now because we want, don't want to do it in the cold months of the year, but we don't want to do it late in the fall either because we discovered when we do it too late in the fall and, and you have things like getting close to time change and stuff that by the time we're doing some stuff that we're looking at outside, it gets a little bit dark and we don't want that. We want you to be able to see everything you're going. So, and Crystal Ramsey goes, is there a community engagement committee to assist Dana or other city directors with events? Uh, you know, honestly, there's not, but maybe we might need something like that. I bet Dana would be willing to, to take on some volunteers to do that. So feel free to reach out to Dana for that. And Thelma just jumped on. Thelma Poole says, I'm late, but I've subscribed and turned on alert bell for future. Well, I appreciate that, Thelma. Uh, uh, if you miss what, whatever you missed today, you're more than welcome to follow it up and, you know, by watching it later in the day. Uh, you know, one thing we didn't mention. Gary Thompson asked, he goes, you mentioned earlier, Bryant being awarded 2.5 million for the Bryant Parkway. Is there a projected road to the airport well actually that project has started you just can't tell it because all that start of that project is us submitting documents to RDOT for their approval and we're in that process we should get through with that process relatively soon so hopefully my hope is early 2021 that we will actually be out doing some groundbreaking relating to that so uh that's my hope but as you know, as I've said several times, when you deal with federal government and state government, they can be ridiculously slow. And uh, a lot of them, I'm just gonna throw this out, and I might get in trouble for it, but uh, a lot of state employees are working from home and they might not be working as hard as they should. I'm just saying, I don't know who it is or anything else, but I'm just going, going there. Um, since he did bring that up, we are anticipating some type of public engagement meeting, whether it's virtual or, right. or what, this probably in the month of November. Okay. For that project uh, coming from Barber. So if they'll just make sure they're signed up for Notify Me, make sure um, they get those notifications. We'll start sending that out as soon as we get the details on it. Uh, Mr. Thompson, Gary, or Dana, just uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Gary Thompson is what it is. I'll get it out in the uh, Dana did tell me that we are, there is supposed to be a, a public engagement portion of that that will, should happen in November. Our engineers Garver is, is working on arranging that. We don't know if it's in person or virtual yet. And part of that will, of course, depend on what we have to do in relation to COVID. Uh, but if you want to get on Notify Me and be notified of these meetings and things like that, that would be a great way to do it, which reminds me that I need to remind everybody, if you're not on Notify Me, uh, feel free to get on there. You can get notifications of when the meetings are. Uh, they will send you a link for the agendas for meetings and different and stuff like that. So you will be more in the know of what's happening on in the city of Bryant. In addition, that is where you go for the yard waste program. So you go to Notify Me 
and oh, I'm sorry, report a concern. I'm sorry. I get mm -hmm. it. It's Saturday morning after a football game. I'm saying, uh, you go to report a concern for that and you fill out your form for, you know, pickup of yard waste. You just take it and you'll follow the, the steps that they tell you to do, put it near your curb. And every Tuesday city employees will come by and pick that up. Uh, if for some reason they don't get it on that particular Tuesday, I'm sure you can reach out to them and they will be there the next day. Sometimes they get a lot of requests and it takes them a little bit to get to everybody. But if you don't get it on the, re the, the report of concern, mm -hmm. yeah, got the right one this time. If you don't get it on the report of concern, we don't know that you need it picked up, so we might miss it. So be sure to fill that form out and do that. I know here recently there's been some talk about on that report of concern that it's kind of an irritant that people are having for certain things to uh, set up an account. Uh, I, I think we've got that smoothed out. We've been working. Yeah. If it's not fixed yet, we've been working diligently to fix that because we understand you don't, for just an occasional report, oh, I see somebody has a water leak and report that, it's a real issue to have to set up a, a login and stuff like that. So we're trying to solve that problem. We think we have it fixed, but maybe not. <clears throat> so I uh, appreciate all that. And uh, I don't know of anything else relating to that. Again, again one of the things that will be discussed uh, this, this coming up campaign, which the Yard Waste Program brought it up, was... Uh, there's going to be another discussion on the burn ordinance that was passed recently. Uh, I re at the last council meeting, it was requested by a council member to put that on the agenda for discussion because they felt that some calls from developers who felt that the charge that we have placed for a permit, a burn permit for developers was too high. So if you have an opinion on that, uh, look over the burn ordinance. Uh, I think you can find it online and feel free to contact your council members on, on your thoughts on that, whether you think it's a good idea to have that charge there or it should be lower or it should be higher or it should be not at all. Uh, that, that's really up to the people. Uh, in the know. newsletter this month has kind of a simple reference for you know how the burn ordinance yeah. affects residents. Dana reminded me the newsletter this week ha has a simple kind of outline of what the what the impact of the burn ordinance is for you so if you need it if you burn your yard waste just follow those directions and look on that if you need to find that I think we put that on Facebook as well on yeah, our on city website. page and on the website so so just reach out and find that and uh with all that it'll be a good day mm -hmm. and uh Somebody goes, great to hear the Bryant Parkway project is crawling <laughs> forward. You're absolutely right. It's great. And I wish it was more of a, a fast walk than a crawl. But again, state and federal, you know, we're doing all we can, I promise. Uh, I don't see any additional questions. Uh, like I say, feel free if you have any questions or comments on anything coming up on the city agenda for a council meeting, which we'll, we'll put that out, I think Thursday is when that goes out. Uh, but if you see any questions that you have relating to that, feel free to contact you know your, your council members and express your thoughts on it because that's how you get involved. Um, if, we, if council members only hear people saying, I don't want something and more people want it, then they're probably gonna react to the I don't want. So it's important to get both sides of the story whenever you do things like this. So feel free to reach out. <clears throat> Kara Brookins goes, I'll take a crawl forward over a full stop any day. Thanks for the coffee. Mine's gone cold. Well, I kept mine in my insulated container, so it's still nice and warm. Uh, you should go refresh that coffee. And with that, I will say, have a great day. It's going to be up in the high 70s today. Get out and enjoy the fall colors and the beautiful sunshine because who knows, winters are coming, folks. And the way this year's gone, there's no telling what winter's going to look like. I'm just saying, 2020 is real. So with that, I'll say, I'm beautiful. I'll say, go Hornets. And I'll say, just be nice to each other. Y'all be sweet out there. Bye. Oh, keep calm and have coffee with.